with the Brain and Body Foundation. Now, we've been talking about inflammation and how that affects pretty much everything about your health. And um, last week, we kind of looked at some of the factors that affect your health. Uh, this time, we really want to go in-depth into the what I call the laws of life and how that affects um, inflammation. And like you know, I, I try to make it as simple, simple as possible. I want to categorize these things uh, so that you can just, like a checklist, you can see, okay, where am I lacking, uh, where do I need to strengthen, where am I weak at, where do I need to strengthen, because you have to get, you have to get information right, you have to be aware of it all the time, uh, because again, we can't really measure the, measure those inflammation factors in Nigeria very well, and of course, in some of these specialist hospitals, you can go measure them, but the, the costs a lot, and it's going to take a lot of time, and uh, most people just can't, um, pay for these things, like shall we, shall we put it that way. So it's very important that you, first of all, are aware of inflammation, and then you are aware of the things that raise inflammation levels and reduce inflammation levels. So the laws of life, what are they? Remember we said there are seven of them. One, and you probably see it on your board, um, on the screen, one is the quality, the quality of your health or the quality of your life is affected by one, the quality of the words that you hear, the quality of the words you speak, the quality of the words you read. Number two, the quality of your beliefs. Number three, I'm rushing through this now. Number three, the quality of the thoughts and emotions that are constantly going on in your head and in your mind. Number four, the quality of the foods or what it, what goes in through your mouth. The foods, drinks, cigarette smoke, or whatever. Whatever goes in through your mouth, the quality of that. Number five, um, the quality of care you give your body. And remember, that's a really large category because it addresses everything from sleep to sex. Enough said. <laughs> Number six. Is that five or six? Six. So number six now are your relationships, the quality of your relationships, and there's a lot to be said about that. And then number seven, uh, the quality of your vocation, your vocation, what you do, your nine to five, so to speak, the work or whether it's work or school or home care or hobbies, whatever it is, whatever keeps you occupied, very, very important. So these are the seven laws of life. Let's begin to address them with regards to inflammation. So, bottom line is this, your body is uh, designed, made, created, whatever flows your boat, boat is, 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 is created to function at low levels of inflammation, that's when it does its best work, that's when it does its best healing. Now, of course, if there's an injury or there's a problem, your body ha quickly addresses that problem, it gets inflamed, it addresses that problem, and then it backs off. So there's a problem, boom, it goes all over it, it fixes it. Kind of like our example we gave in the last episode about um, kids in the streets, some fighting. Let's say before that thing went out of hand and there was gun smoke and people were shooting guns at each other and there was a small war, what if for some parent had, with a level head, had come in and, you know, just taken her child and smacked the child and put everything back in order? Well, that thing would not have, that problem would not have grown to the level in which people started dying and people started getting injured. So, inflammation is like that. If your body is working well, your body quickly overwhelms the problem, the infection, the injury, whatever it is, and then fixes it, repairs what damage has been has 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 resulted from it, and then it backs off. But again, things like nutritional deficiencies, things like genes, things like the environment, things like mental states, all come in and factor in and cause a problem. So, number one. The words you speak and you hear and you read, uh, the things, if you hear things, let's say somebody says you're a fool, they says they're a stupid person, think about it, anything you hear can affect your emotional and health and mental state. And so once you begin to hear things that affect your health, if it's positive, if you're always hearing things that are positive, that um, you're going to make it, you're going to be strong, I love you, believe it or not, those words not just from the emotional component now, but those words, they generate an energy. Uh, it's hard to explain it through, but the bottom line is that positive words produce 
positive moods, positive feelings, and therefore positive body. Non-positive words or negative words will produce the opposite. Anything that produces something negative in your body tends you towards inflammation. Anything that produces anything positive in your body tends you towards non-inflammation or shall we say resolution because you, you st- you've got to have inflammation. Inflammation has to work. If your inflammation, if your body's inflammatory mechanisms aren't working like they should, then you are a sitting duck. Any infection, any virus that comes your way will wreak havoc in your body. But if your body is primed, if your body your immune system is working like you should, it will work. The problem is when this thing gets out of balance, and I'm going to keep on reiterating that balance is the key. All right, so your words play a key role. I'm not going to spend too much time on your words. I'm going to go more towards your thoughts and your emotions because that really is, it really addresses and is quite closely um, relates to stress. Now, we live in a country, especially if we're living in Lagos, but we live in a country where there's a lot of stress. You've got financial problems, you've got traffic problems, you've got pollution in the air, your boss is screaming at you, everybody's making noise, you know. All those things begin to compound, or have a compounding effect. And what we know is that once there's stress, emotional stress, your body releases chemicals to fight that stress. Remember, everything is about chemicals. Everything is about the balance of one chemical or the other. But if there's stress, your body releases chemicals. Your nervous system is on edge, and the nervous system is primed for action. And so, and this is not supposed to be a prolonged thing. You're not supposed to be stressed all the time. But once there's stress, your body releases those chemicals and continues to release those chemicals. Continues to release those chemicals. That without going into too much detail, puts you in more of an an inflammatory state and makes you less likely to heal. And so again, if you you checked those numbers, your CRP levels, your AA, EPA levels, you'll find out that it is higher than it should be. And again, that makes you more prone to things like heart attacks, strokes, and cancers. We're going to go into the next few laws when you come back or when we come back. See you soon. Okay, welcome back. All right, the third law. The third law, and it's really important for you to, now that you know these things, that's what Google is there for. Go Google these things and really learn about it some more. Stress will affect your health. Uh, what's the third law? The third law has to do with your beliefs. All right. Uh, beliefs is a big word. Beliefs could be beliefs about your religious beliefs. Beliefs could be your beliefs about yourself. Beliefs could be your beliefs about your potential. Your beliefs about you know, the people above you. Your beliefs about what is below you. Your, your, it could be your beliefs about your country. Whether your country is a, whether you feel your country is is after your best interests or not. So no, we're not going to say much about that. But beliefs play a huge role. What are those deep seated beliefs? And of course. Um, our culture plays a role, our social social environment plays a role, our upbringing also plays a role in your beliefs. Now, you may not see how this factors directly with stress, but I'll tell you this, if you know, the, the underlying, if your underlying beliefs are empowering, you find out that you are less likely to succumb to stress. If you if you believe that this is a happy world, if you if you believe that this world is for your benefit, if you believe that you can win in this world, if you have faith, whatever religion you're from, if your faith is vibrant and your faith is active and you're actively moving towards a goal and you believe that you will accomplish that goal and you believe that nothing is impossible to you you tend to be stronger, you tend to have less, uh, you, tend to, you tend to be less likely to succumb to things like illnesses and disease and uh, infections and things like that. And so that helps you stay strong and it helps your inflammation balance, helps you stay primed so that you can deal with problems and, and address them. Um, 
I'm going to jump on to the next one because the, the, uh, what you put in your mouth, again, is probably the most important one. So i tell you what, but, uh, what, what we'll do is this. We're going to go through the next three. We're going to put a hold on number four, which is the quality of what goes into your mouth. We're going to put a hold on that for now. We're going to deal with the next three. And then in the fourth segment, we're going to just talk about what you put in your mouth. I hope we'll have enough time for that. All right, so number five, the quality of care you give your body. The quality of care. Let me tell you this. Let me just be frank with you. Your best years, your best years are from, let's say, 23 to about 27, 28. Once you get to 29, 30, you've reached the peak the peak of your health physically, mentally. Now, there's no saying there aren't some outliers where some people continue to do better, but they're in the overwhelming minority. Most people, when they get to 30, they kind of plateau strength-wise. And that's when you start having all these different illnesses begin to creep in. And then, of course, when you turn 40, 40 your eyesight begins to fail. I mean, I, I never believe it would happen to me, but here yeah, I'm naturally squinting <laughs> from time to time to look at struggling to read a very small fine print. So health-wise, you reach, you, you get your 30s. That's why I tell young people, I say, listen, enjoy your youth while you have it, <laughs> because it's not going to come back. So you better make the most of the time you have. Um, so at the age of 30, you've got to now start taking, especially if you're a black person, you've got to start now start taking the right steps to empower and to protect yourself. I wish somebody had told me this when I was 30, and I'm a doctor, right? I wish somebody, I wish I knew about these things. So, you need sleep. You need good sleep. If your sleep is not satisfactory, if you're sleeping four hours, five hours, it's going to come back and, it's going to come back and bite you in the, you know what, it's going to affect you in the future. Uh, because, again, your body needs that time, that seven to eight hours time of complete darkness, by the way. It has to be completely dark, and you have to, hopefully, maybe you can turn it put the curtains on and all that, but your body needs that darkness and silence to sleep and to recover and to repair itself. If you're not getting that adequate sleep, you're going to be, you're going to be inflamed. Also, um, you need to exercise on a regular basis. If your body is not moving like it should, if you're always sitting down, if you're always lying down, you're not moving like you should, you are more likely to get inflamed. If you are obese, if you have excess fat in the body, and many of us, Niger many of us, and even Nigerians have, we are overweight. And, you know, I think we need to, me to have a different um, standard of measurement for black people because um, some of it, we, I think we have, you know, maybe heavier bones or heavier muscles. I, mean, I know I'm overweight, but according to the white measurement, I'm obese. <laughs> And I, I know I'm not obese. I mean, I do have a lot. Of, I do have some muscle here, but um, different standards. But in mind, what I'm saying is that if you have fat in your body, if you have excess fat in your body, that fat produces, believe it or not, produces chemicals which make you more inflamed. In other words, it sets, it dials up your inflammatory settings. That means, it means that you have more. If you have more fat in your body, it means you are more likely to have inflammation than if you have less fat. Again, if I've studied it, you'll see it, it's, 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 it's uh, they've done a lot of research on that. Um, what else do we want to talk about with regards to inflammation? Um, um, and um, number five, so we've talked about exercise, we've talked about sleep, we've talked about um, weight, movement. Okay, let's move on to number six. This is a really interesting aspect, uh, this, this whole thing about... Uh, about relationships. I mean, you would never have thought about it. And I'm, 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 I'm more of a, I'm, I'm more of a loner. I don't, um, I'm not always out there partying and all that. So I always thought, oh, it's okay. But then the studies and research are showing that you need a lot of good social connections, and you need to have that interplay of really robust, meaningful relationships. Uh, they found out that those who don't are more prone to many of these other conditions. 
especially those who are very, very lonely and don't have that social network, so to speak, that is helping to bolster to of them. And there's a, there's a study that was done in Harvard for about 60 years, and they found out that those who lived the longest um, had meaningful quality relationships. So relationships are very important. Number seven, the kind of work you do. Again, that can make you or mar you. If it's a kind of work that uh, you enjoy, you're enjoying the relationships at work, if, you, if it's something that is leveraging your physical, your potential, your capabilities, if it's something that gives you the fulfillment that's, that is required, that you need, if it's something that is also paying your bills, you're, you're more likely to be happy, you're less likely to be stressed, and therefore you are going to have lower levels of inflammation. And the converse is also true. All right, so we've gone through the seven laws, or shall we say we've gone through the six laws. Now, in the next segment, we're going to look at the fourth law, which is the law that concerns what you put in your mouth. And I wanted to make that a separate one because of how important it is. So stay tuned. We will be back with you shortly. Welcome back for the third and final segment. The quality of what you put in your mouth is crucial to inflammation. Remember what we've said, your body is run by chemicals. So the food you put in your mouth can either be pro-inflammatory, which means it encourages inflammation, and it could be um, anti or against inflammation. It could be pro encouraging or anti-inflammation so some of these things you already know um, the general principles are this you want to put foods in your body that are alive that help to nourish you that are quote unquote the word is nutrient dense so you can't get away from live foods which are fruits and vegetables these are probably the most important and uh, between the two between vegetables and fruits i would say go for vegetables more why uh, both of them yes they have fiber but fruits contain more sugar and they have less of the trace what are known as the trace minerals like magnesium and all these other nice uh, potassium all these other nutrients that are very important for health Vegetables have, have less sugar, they have more fiber, they have less sugar, and they have more of these trace elements. The quote I love the most when it comes to nutrition is, the human body heals itself, and proper nutrition provides it with the resources that it requires to accomplish its task. The human body heals itself and proper nutrition provides it with the resources that it needs to accomplish this task. And I hope from our discussion you've seen that why this is so, so key. Because if your body is constantly in a state of um, damage and repair, and all our bodies are, all our bodies are constantly being damaged in certain areas, uh, probably in certain areas more than the others, depending on your nutritional status, your genes, and all those things, but we are constantly in a state of repair, constantly in a state of repair. It's the nutrition, it's the nutrients that provide the building blocks, that provide the energy, that provide the tools that your body will now use to make those repairs. Now, if your body is constantly being inflamed, is constantly being uh, attacked, and you're not providing it with the commensurate level of nutrition to help it combat those problems, then it will be in deep trouble. So that is why I, I think, probably more than anything else, that is why some many people tend to have more of, um, more, more, they're more prone to heart attacks and strokes and cancers, especially black people, because our nutrition is just not enough. Remember I showed you the quote about the Nobel Prize winner who 
discovered the AIDS virus. And he was asked the question, he said, why is it that sub-Saharan Africa, that's Nigerians included, why Nigeria and other countries tend to have high levels of HIV? And he pointed to their food. He said, our food is not providing us with the tools, our nutrients. It's not, it's not empowering enough to help us to fight these infections, to fight all these other things that are happening to us. Happen to us. And remember, we have malaria, typhoid, and all of these other tropical diseases that affect us. So we are in higher levels. We are constantly in a case of dealing with all these problems. So we are in higher levels of inflammation than probably safe people who live in other countries. So again, we have to look at our food. And if your food is not providing you with the right nutrients, then you must supplement especially if you're past the age of 30. Again, if you've enjoyed your youth, fine. But once you get to 30, <laughs> you've got to start thinking about taking some kind of supplement. And one supplement that I recommend more than any, any, anyone, thankfully it's, um, it's something that is not rare, um, you sh it's vitamin D3. You can get vitamin D3 from the health food stores. We as black people are notoriously, notoriously deficient in vitamin D3. And this is also important for people, for, for mothers, expectant mothers. They find out that those mothers whose vitamin D3 levels are low tend not to have healthy children. So just remember that. Now, um, so what are the things that can, are pro-inflammatory? So fried foods, if you're always eating akara, fried plantain, that oil, that granite oil, that uh, canola oil, what's the other word for oil? Anyway, the oil, whether it's palm oil or granite oil that you're using to fry, or those people over there are frying, um, using to fry all these different things that you eat. What we found out is that the, the heating of these oils to very high temperatures, changes their composition and makes them really harmful to the body and they can cause um, those, they, 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 they change their comp chemical comp composition and making them release chemicals that can uh, damage the lining of the blood vessels and dam damage our tissues. So if you're eating those things all the time, all the time, you are putting stuff in your body that is damaging. So you need to be able to combat that. So my recommendation always is whatever food you're eating, make sure, make sure you're taking some kind of vegetables. It could be cucumber, it could be carrots, it could be kale, spinach, spinach, <laughs> some of them call spinach. Um, all, make sure you wash them all. Be sure you wash them because that could cause another problem, but make sure they are very well uh, disinfected uh, because, again, that could cause another problem. So you've got to keep on taking the right foods. Um, fruits and vegetables, but what else can cause um, um, high density, um, what else could cause uh, pro-inflammatory states? Anything, sugars, anything sugars, um, too much carbohydrates, uh, yeah, taking, not as much fats now, but carbohydrate, um, soft drinks, um, yeah, taking sweet stuff, yeah, taking processed foods, yeah, taking all this uh, fast foods, yeah, microwaving your stuff, you need to manage to reduce the, all those things that you're doing. So all these different things, and you know many of these things yourself. If you're smoking, you're putting in a lot of inflammatory stuff in your body. So again, there are simple common sense things that if you are aware of them, you want to say, listen, I've got to keep my body in a anti-inflammatory state, a low inflammatory state, again, you can't test them, but you now know some of the things that raise your inflammation levels and you know some of the things that reduce your inflammation levels. So you will do well to learn about these things and study more, but more important, to be able to do well to practice these things. I'm going to stop here. Uh, my director already told me to stop. So uh, check this out. We are at, you can see our information at the, at the end of the page. And um, please stay tuned. Be sure to follow us on our next week's topic. God bless and have a great day.